So God had me up last night at 3.20 in the morning after showing me a repetitive image over and over and over. And he just put it in a loop until I got out of bed and came to my computer and started to write. So the image that he gave me was a canoe. And in the front of the canoe, there was a blue energy representing a person, followed by three orange energies. And um, the blue image is of one person sharing news about the rapture and three more images of orange uh, people in the boat um, as it fills. This image kept getting repeated over and over, like I was saying, until I got up. So I'm going to just go through my notes here um, and tell you the verses he told me to read. So I'd like you to actually read the verses instead of me going through all of that. And I can tell you what he told me about each one. So he says, Jesus said to me, you're all in the same boat. One person declares a message from me and everyone else joins in with their own understanding of my word on that topic. Do you see that in the word there is so much contradiction, multiple meanings if it is not discerned? And then he says, please read John 1, 6 to 11. This applies to the lot of you. In this time, wanderers with little true understanding. Please get your Bible. So then I read the verse and he explains this to me so that I will understand. God sends people ahead of Jesus to share his works and his words so that more people will come to him. But even in his own place, he came to what was his own place, but his people did not accept him. So he's saying when people share the word of God, they're following a lot of times don't believe them. They think they're crazy or, or they're losing it. They don't understand why they're sharing these messages and they don't believe it. Same thing happened to Jesus in his own town. Okay. Um, I also wrote down John 3 verse 6 to 11 because I was guided to do that. And um, this is that verse. What I'm about to tell you is true. We speak about things we know. We are witnesses about what we have seen. But still you people do not accept what we say. And Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in the Bible, but he was telling me or showing me that it's always that way. We speak, those that speak out for God, speak about what he shows us and what he's, um, what we've been witness to either in visions or, or hearing or whatever from God. Um, and the, the people still don't accept it because it's not uh, the way they're expecting it. He says, this is the lesson. This is the test. And he's telling me now people are going to question God doesn't test. Well, he does. If you go back in the old Bible and don't ask me the verses, but um, when you're told to sacrifice your own son, is that not a test of your heart or your obedience? Okay. Whoever that was in the Bible, I don't remember, but okay. That's part of it. Um, he goes, this is a lesson. This is a test and how it will always be with human experience. A hierarchy in the mind dictates what someone feels is authority. But the truth is, I love you all. I am the father with much love for you and the world. Yes, I am a just God, but I see your hearts. I see my sheep and I see the little lambs who experience the exodus from the cities. And that is the people who will not follow them. Then he gives me um, Exodus 2, verse 11. So I read that. He says to me, what, are you, what am I trying to tell you? This is what he said to me. And I said, well, in that verse, I see that Moses saw injustice of his own people and stepped in to protect the man. He then committed a crime because he felt no one was watching. Um, he protected one of his own people from the abuse. But in actuality, he was being watched by others who then felt he would act out against them in judgment. Um, I read more of the verse to understand it, but God showed me the first verse to say, those who feel injustice is taking place will stand up against, or sorry, will stand up for and step in to protect others. He goes, this is true, Suzanne. And you have always had this gift of discerning the deeper meaning of what is going on with people in general. The whole debate over the rapture, this is God, God speaking to me is is a big one and it is meant to make everyone think there are two clear sides to this and you me do not understand the other side because you have faith in me that I will come to rescue the survivors and uh, from any human wrath placed upon the people 
I will not make you suffer. I have told you this directly. After the vision I gave you of my wrath, the cross that was bent over and the wind was blowing, um, after that vision of my wrath that is coming, I showed you this clearly, knowing you would share my words. Um, I'm not going to mention names, but there is another girl that's the same. Although sometimes her childlike enthusiasm outweighs her obedience to me, but she shares what she feels is the truth of what I tell her. But she is not always right. But I do not condemn her for that, nor will I ever, for her heart is pure, and the con the condemnation she receives from others is enough for her pure heart. You are correct every time you want to say, he's talking to me now, you're correct. Um, every time you want to say, um, but don't you realize the Bible has been manipulated by man? I always want to say that, okay? Um, you and many others see that and have a true discernment for true discernment for you pray for those who follow my words blindly. blindly that is all. Blindly meaning they cannot always see the deeper meaning or truly understand due to the manipulations of how the Bible was written, I guess. But you do not judge, for you see their hearts also. Then he says, read Luke 11, verse 2. So please read that. Um, and he says, uh, it says, so... I also decided to write down an orderly report of exactly what happened, and I'm doing this for you, most excellent the the Theophilus. I want you to know the things that you have been taught are true. So when, when I read that verse, okay, God was saying to me, basically, um, when he speaks to us, like he speaks to this person in the verse, um, he's, he's speaking to us truthfully, and what he's telling us is the truth, okay? Um, and then I accidentally wrote down the wrong verse. I wrote, I realized that I had written down Luke verse 2 instead of Luke 2 verse 11. And he says, there are no mistakes, Suzanne. So read Luke 11 verse 2. Um, and this is it. Jesus said to them, when you pray, this is what you should say. Father, may your name be honored and may your kingdom come. So when you give messages to the masses in this day and age, be honest, be truthful to your own ability of my understandings of what I have shared. Honor the Father and preach to him to come. That is the rapture. That is the second coming. That is the end days when you all shall reign and prosper with the Father. Okay, uh, now I think... I'm thinking in my head now that when somebody hears this, they're going to pick that apart. Okay, the second coming, the rapture, and us all being reigning with God, right? And Jesus says, Suzanne, for I have spoken. Let no man, no man dictate what they do not understand to one of my sheep that I have called into action. No one knows the right hand of the Father better than I do. Your Lord and Savior jesus and he goes yes you call me jesus so that was the end of the message he gave me oh and as i was i could i could feel his energy leaving he says do not judge and then he shows me that big, big smile it has this beautiful big smile so that was the end of the message that um i got last night i wasn't sure whether i should share it or not um but i'm feeling guided to share it and hope that you all get some insight from it there's many of us out here that truly do connect with god and there's a lot of scoffers there's a lot of people that can't understand that because they truly i don't feel have the same connection um that someone does who maybe gets visions or or can hear or is shown plain a uh, plain visions or whatever you know um it's hard for it's hard for people that have had a, a true connection with Jesus like that, like I have. I've seen him, seen him stand in front of me. I hear him, you know, but somebody out there that's going to pick apart my understandings or if I'm defending another person doesn't know my relationship with Jesus, nor do they really have a right to. Um, nobody else needs to understand your personal relationship with God. It's private unless you want to share or unless he's put you into action to defend another person or to speak about what he wants the masses to understand. And, uh, you know, I I just feel for the people out there that pick 
pick at others and feel they're justified and they're called into action. The Bible has been manipulated over the years. And I mean, that's a fact. And a lot of things are different in the, in the Gospels than they are in the New Testament. Jesus died for us, for our sins, shed his blood, and we are covered in that if we believe in him and we have given our heart to him. He has erased all sin. So if somebody steps out feeling they have, they are speaking to Jesus and they're sharing a message and they truly feel that's what they're doing, even if they're not, even if it's untrue and it's a sin, we've been cleared of all of our sins. And that is something that a person does from the heart. It's not something intentional where they set out to hurt another person. So I think a, a lot of you out there need to just chill out. And, and there's enough division in the world and there's enough um, bashing and, and there's a lot of trolls on here. You know, it's not hard to pick out the trolls, you know, the, the ones that feel they need to get in there and pick, 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 you know. I learned that the hard way years ago on my YouTube channel, so I've grown a bit of a tough skin. But uh, Jesus came to me last night with this message with a different energy of, I can't believe that you're letting those people bother you because I shared a message with a friend and it got attacked by multiple people. So it did bother me a bit because, uh, you know, when somebody comes up against you and you know you're speaking from the heart and you know your relationship with God and he stood in front of you and said, you walk with me, okay? When those people don't understand that, it can be hurtful, right? But he came in with almost a just attitude like, okay, let me remind you of how this works, okay? And, and stay fast on your course. And, you know, the other, the other ladies out there and gentlemen that are sharing the word of God just need to keep going and not let the scoffers bring them down. Anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend and I'll talk to you again.